Here's Wendy. because I'm here with you. Hey, Rihanna's seven day airplane tour hit some turbulence. I've got all the details. Let's talk about it and more. It's time for Hot Topic. By the way, uh, good news for everybody, there's hope for saving the Twinkie after all. <laughs> Just don't forget what show spearheaded this whole Save the Twinkie campaign. <laughs> all right, so the makers of Hostess Twinkie, uh, you've been following the case, but the latest update is, is that they are in court right now and it looks like uh, they might be able to avoid bankruptcy. Uh, the hostess uh, Save the Twinkie uh, campaign is, it, we've got to keep that going. The ho-hos, the ding-dongs. <laughs> the, the Wonder Bread. 18,000 hostess employees, American workers could be without a job. So let's hope that, you know, they're able to save the Twinkie. And as best as I can tell you, if you've been following the story, I think we're all kind of confused as to what happened because, you know, it wasn't for lack of us eating them. They were making play. <laughs> They, they were making money, but they're in court having to do with the union and some other, the union's always doing something, right? <laughs> anyway, the union and some other stuff. So shout out to the Twinkies workers and the hostess workers and hopefully we'll be able to save you. Yeah. And so now, um, if you've been following Dancing with the Stars, then you know that we're down to the final five couples and Maxim's younger brother, Val, who, um, it doesn't, look, it, and, and if you look, if you look closely, he looks all natural. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, a lot of guys, they cheat when they have to pose in speedos. If you know what I'm saying, he he looks like, he looks natural. Anyway, uh, he danced the flamingo in the water with his partner from General Hospital, Kelly Monaco, and now they're tied for last place, even though they got really high scores. I can never figure out how the scoring works. If you dance well, why aren't you winning? I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, they're both denying rumors that they are more than just dance partners, even though the word on the street is, is that they are more. I don't know. Anyway, one couple goes home tonight, because in my mind, I think that everybody, except for me and Tony. Tony, me and, <laughs> me and you didn't do a damn thing, and that's real. Um, but. I can say that uh, um, one couple goes home tonight and hopefully it won't be my Tony. And um, then uh, somebody gets cut until there's nobody left. All right, so now, um, have you heard about this Rihanna plane tour? I mean, it looked like a good idea. You saw the pictures on TMZ of her <clears throat> wearing the captain's hat and popping bottles and, and giving the captain the lap dance. And, and everybody was all oop, oop in the plane and it looked like, this is gonna be fun. It's seven days, seven con uh, concerts, flying around the country with Rihanna and around the world. She invited 250 fans and journalists to promote her new album, Unapologetic. She got the private plane going. Um, it sounds good, free trip, champagne, food, up close and personal with Rihanna. But the trip has taken a nosedive. Oh. Well. As you can imagine, after a while, I guess, you know, the real, the, what Rihanna really wanted to do probably sank in and maybe she just wanted some alone time except you're trapped in a plane and you're trapped entertaining people and passengers want a lot. The passengers are uh, tweeting complaints. They're saying long waits on the tarmac, uh, of, the tarmacs of each place that they go. When I say long waits, they're talking hours. <laughs> they're being deprived of sleep on account of she's pumping European techno house music in the speakers of the plane, so. <laughs> You're, you're trying to sleep for just a moment and all you hear is <laughs> <laughs> And they're being deprived of food and showers. Stinky. Plus, uh, there's no cell or internet service. How are they tweeting? Can you tweet without cell service? Can you, can you tweet without, uh, Susie? 
No, you can't. Somebody's lying. <laughs> Somebody's lying to be dramatic. But I have to say that um, they, all, they, meaning the fans and the uh, journalists, are also complaining that there's no contact with Rihanna. Like, virtually what we saw on TMZ is, what that was it. <laughs> She's probably sitting up in first class with the door locked high. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, things got out of control uh, when one journalist uh, ran, uh, ran up and down the aisles naked. There he is. <laughs> that was your onboard entertainment. I mean, and then, and, and people are saying that it's, a, it's like a scary plain prison. And some of these journalists, uh, or like, you know, young journalists like MTV and so on and so forth. Our friend Ian Drew from Us Weekly Magazine is on board. You know we have to have a, a spy everywhere. <laughs> so Ian is on board and we tried to call him, but he was so exhausted that he didn't want to talk with us. And, and then we decided, you know what? It's best not to even talk to him. We're gonna wait for him to come back. He says he needs about a week to sleep and deplane, and then he's gonna come here and spill the tea. <laughs> I know. And, and the tour winds up uh, tonight. Uh, they're going their way back. They're gonna land in New York and then there's gonna be a performance here and then that's gonna be that. But um, anyway, so this is Nicki Minaj. So now Nicki Minaj is, is speaking. That's good. Nicki, you got a reaction. It's better than nothing at all. Um, okay, so Nicki Minaj is speaking out about um, her American Idol feud with Mariah Carey, and she's finally recognizing what most of us did already, and that is, you know, you have to respect a legend. You, you don't necessarily have to kiss behind, but you have to respect a legend, and that would be Mariah Carey. And, and here's what Nicki said. She says, you know what, she's an icon, I respect her. Um, I've always respected her, but you know, we're human and things happen. She's referring to, you know, her uh, being very belligerent uh, towards Mariah. Uh, yeah, things, hormonal things, you might have had a fight with your boyfriend, you know, things happen. This is very ladylike of you, Nikki. Very nice. In the meantime, uh, she was asked, if, uh, if um, she's going to do a duet with Mariah, uh, perhaps, since they'll be spending a lot of time on American Idol. And um, Mariah said, uh, if she'll have, or Nikki said, if she'll have me, I'll be there waiting. I think that would be fantastic. I, I, would, I think that I think that'd be really great. Nikki uh, also is very, very concerned that her um, Idol co-judges are not going to bring it uh, out of fear, you know, you know, it's easy to bring it when you're watching TV and criticizing people in your living room, but it's very difficult to sit in a, why in a purple chair <laughs> on TV and really say it like you mean it. But this Nikki, like me, she's not scared. And she says, you know, she is going, she, she defends her decision to want to bring it to the, um, bring it, you know, like this to the uh, contestants by saying, look, tough love will help the contestants grow. And I hope that she does because Randy is, Randy, Keith Urban is just a nice man, you know, married to uh, Nicole Kidman. Um, I don't think that he has the personality to bring it. Mariah, will, Mariah, you don't have to bring the heat. You bring the crazy, because you're good at that. <laughs> and also, bring us something to look at. Hey, Randy. <laughs> Randy, uh, those horizontal stripes are not helping whatever you're hiding under that shirt. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, the new season of American Idol begins in January. Yeah. And I can't wait. Okay. You know, uh, in Miami, several of these basketball wives are holding out for more money. Well, TMZ is reporting that the filming began last week for season five, which a birdie has told me that season five is the last season. So they're holding out for more. I'm shocked. <laughs> Almost all of this audience, with the exception of maybe 10 women over there, <laughs> are happy that this is the last season of Basketball Wives Miami. Yeah. You are my people. <laughs> so guess who's holding out? Tammy, Susie, Shawnee O'Neal. 
um, and Evelyn. They, uh, they apparently, Evelyn's holding out also? Yep. Eva's holding out also. Um, they don't have contracts and sources say that VH1 has said, look, nobody's getting, a, uh, allegedly, nobody's getting a raise. We made that clear before filming season five. And if you continue to complain, we have no problem replacing you. Now, being that this is supposed to, be, supposed to be the last season, VH1 has nothing to lose by not giving any of you all raises. And, you know, these are the only four that are holding out. They have some other ones, you know, the other ones uh, that, that they're filming. And, and, but my question is, Shawnee, I thought you were the boss of this entire operation. <laughs> you and Shed Media. So why are you asking for a raise? Unless you were never really the boss after all and you were deceiving us? <laughs> I'm just saying, think about it, think about it. And then Evelyn, what you need to do, since you know, you've got a terrific body and I understand you wanna do a workout video and everything, you need to use this last season. Just get on there regardless of, you know, just take the money you took from last season. <laughs> you know, get on there and, and build your outside of Basketball Wives Live since it's all gonna be over. Let us understand why it is that you need to be the workout lady so we can buy your DVD. And also, open up that shoe store that you used to have many moons ago. You had good shoes and I loved where it was located and girls would come by and you all would sit and sell a shoe, have a drink. Sell a shoe, have a I love that. And then, and Tammy, Tammy, uh, the most beautiful girl in the world over on the other side with the updo, uh, Tammy, um, you want to be an actress and you've done some acting work already. So this season, just take the money that they're giving you on VH1 because this is the last season, but let us see as your fans, you going out on auditions and acting and things like that. And um, what's this girl's name again? Susan. Susie, I can't even figure out why you're, why you're still there, but as long as you're still there, work on that lisp. <laughs> By the way, um, I heard this story about Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman, and I was shocked and confused when they uh, announced that they were splitting after 30 years of marriage. Well, allegedly, and in the beginning, we didn't know what it was, but in my mind, I was suspicious, and it turns out my suspicions were correct. The wandering eyes. Aww. Yeah, Danny, allegedly. Well, In Touch Weekly magazine, I know, you're wondering who would, who would they wander to? <laughs> and why would she look? Uh, Mr. DeVito, my homie Stromy from Asbury Park, New Jersey, that you are. Yeah, he's from Jersey, too. Uh, Mr. DeVito, I never wondered, but there are a smattering of people in the center aisles of this show right now who were like, who would go home with that? <laughs> no, 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 contraire, mon frere. He's rich, <laughs> very rich. When he stands on his stack of money, he suddenly becomes sexy. <laughs> In Touch Weekly Magazine is reporting that Danny and Rhea have been spotted together multiple times in recent weeks. This is like my favorite story to share with you. Broadway plays with the family, grocery shopping, and even in New Jersey at a wedding, they were together. No word if this means that they're getting back together all romantical life. I suspect not. Uh, you know, I mean, Rhea's had it. Rhea's working. She's busy with Kirstie Alley. They're about to cook up one of the best new sitcoms on TV, that giant baby sitcom that they're gonna do. So she's working, so she's got bragging rights in the house. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure she's, that wandering eye doesn't just come from nowhere. It starts at least a decade before 30-year marriage ends, <laughs> in my mind. Um, but I like that they are coming together. This is, to me, it, and not all divorces should be like this, but certainly when you're old enough and you, you have grown kids and your grown kids have grandchildren and Thanksgiving is two days away, you gotta somehow manage to make it work. And so that's what I appreciate about mature love, even mature divorces. So congratulations, Rhea and Danny, whatever, whatever you're doing. They're, they're making a way so it'll be a nice Thanksgiving in their house, unlike the Bon Jovi house, where I think that Thanksgiving is just gonna be just a mess. Well, you know, the daughter, Stephanie Bon Jovi, and I have an update for you. The Stephanie with the good hair, like the Bieber, except good. <laughs> um, so last week we reported, and you, all, you heard every place, that she overdosed on heroin. Oh. Heroin. 
uh, in her college dorm room. And um, we also heard last week uh, that she was charged with drug possession. But according to Us Weekly magazine, they're saying that her father and mother, no doubt, are very, very upset about this. Uh, but now we're hearing that the charges against Stephanie Bon Jovi have been dropped. And I know what you're saying. See, there are not a lot of people clapping. And you know why they're not clapping, celebrities? Because people feel that celebrities get celebrity treatment in cases like this, correct? <laughs> Well, rest assured, regular people, every place, the celebrities aren't getting um, um, particular treatment. She's getting off and not being charged because of a law here in New York called the Good Samaritan Law. Oh. I'll explain, because it could work for you too. Not that you're doing drugs. <laughs> not that you're doing drugs. Uh, anyone suffering from a drug overdose can't be prosecuted. Yes, the law is designed so that if you feel a heart palpitation because you got a, a good batch right off a brick or something. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the law is designed for people to reach out and call 911 and, and, and get help if you're ODing, and nobody involved in the call will be arrested. Not your friends who are getting down with you, <laughs> and not you, and even if there's pills and heroin strewn everywhere, they just look the other way because it's more important that you save your life, which is terrific. I'll tell you something though, in my house, I think I'd rather go to jail than have to sit around the Thanksgiving dinner with my parents after I OD'd on some heroin. <laughs> because my, like in the Bon Jovi family, I just figure every time Stephanie gets up and goes to the bathroom at Thanksgiving, they're gonna tell her to keep the door open and somebody go watch her. <laughs> And then in a lot of people's family, you have the brothers and sisters who come home from college and the cousins that come over, and then after dinner, you go back you know, in, the, in the garage and twist something up. <laughs> you know what I mean. And, and, and now Stephanie has ruined it for the whole family to, to, to be free to do anything. Every time the turkey baster is missing, you're wondering where it is. I, I mean, just awful.